back to my channel, my friends. I'm Daniela, and today I'm gonna be addressing a question that I get all the time, which is, what's the deal with kiteboarding in the Olympics? Now, to start at the beginning, the only way that kiteboarding was gonna get into the Olympics was through sailing. So sailing as a sport has about 12 medals and each of those are for a different class. Kiteboarding couldn't just like come in and sailing couldn't just automatically add another medal to accommodate kiting. And so the only way or kind of discipline kiting was gonna get into the Olympics is in the racing discipline because that is the most similar to sailing. So what world sailing had to do was actually change one of the medals and decide that they wanted to switch it with kiting. And a lot of the people involved in the International Kiteboarding Association kind of worked with World Sailing in order to get kiteboarding in the Olympics. So where we're at now is basically kiting is in the Olympics for 2024, not for 2020 or now 2021. It didn't quite get in there yet. But in 2024, in Paris, kiting will be a sailing discipline at the Olympic Games. And this is really, really exciting for the sport as a whole. I totally understand where people that don't necessarily race or are more involved in the other disciplines other than racing kind of come from when they say, like, why is it just racing and not, like, freestyle or wave kiting or big air or whatever else? I totally get that. But unfortunately, just the way it works is that kiting was only going to get into the Olympics through sailing. That was the only kind of realistic way it was going to get in. We have the potential to reach a really big audience and grow the sport as a whole, not just in racing. So I personally think that people from each side, we shouldn't be arguing about like why it should or shouldn't be in the Olympics. I think we should be more focusing on how kiting can benefit from being a sailing discipline in the Olympics and how sailing can benefit from having kiting there as well. I think that with this kind of outlook, it'll just be a lot more of a positive four years for everyone. Now, the question is, what's the format? So the format isn't like traditionally what we have seen in kite racing so far. It's not a slalom and it's kind of a twist on regular course racing. So in order to have gender equality, this kiteboarding kind of discipline is gonna be a mixed event with one male and one female from each country. And what we're actually gonna be doing is a relay. Now, this is very new for everyone and we're not completely sure even now what that is gonna look like exactly. It's just gonna be something new and something that we're gonna have to learn and play around with. And I think overall, everyone's really excited. I mean, we already had a couple test events for it in 2019 at the World Championships and at the European Championships. And we had a lot of positive feedback and there's obviously still a lot of kind of logistics that have to be worked out. But overall, I think it's gonna be a really cool way to have gender equality, have kiting in the Olympics, and really demonstrate the possibility of the sport. So what we know so far is that basically in this mixed relay format, there's going to be one guy and one girl from each country, as I said. And for example, maybe the boys will start first, and then once the guy from your country finishes, the girl starts. Again, we still have kind of a lot to learn about what the format is going to look like. But at the same time, we do still have four years to figure that out and to practice it. In the meantime, it's sounding like a lot of the international events are going to be held individually. So we're still going to be racing as individuals at a lot of major events, at least for the next year. But there will also, of course, be like testing events to help figure out the format and just ways for us to practice. With regards to equipment, the way the riders are going to choose their equipment is we're going to be given a list from the IKA of approved foils and kites. And to get on this list, basically a brand has to register their design, whether it's a kite or a foil. 
and they have to stick with manufacturing that design for the next four years. And basically, riders are going to be allowed to choose whatever kite or foil they want to ride. At this time, boards do not have to be registered and bars or harnesses or anything like that also does not have to be registered. I think overall this is just really exciting and it's so cool to see that there's so many more girls getting involved in the sport since now a guy can't just go and show up. There has to be a girl as well. And I think that's gonna be really good for the sport. I've been racing for about five years now and I've seen with my own eyes how the fleet has grown and how many more girls are getting involved in it. And I think that's just really exciting. I remember a lot of events where I was the only girl and it was great. Like I learned a lot from the guys. I never complained about racing against them. It was all fun, but now it's really cool to see so many more girls on the course and the women's fleet is really growing and i think that's just really exciting and i can't wait to see what's going to happen over the next four years